Welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. This is the weekly Q&A show where hopefully we get to answer your tech-related mountain bike queries. You can send your questions into the email address at the bottom of the screen just there. And of course, you can add them in the comments below this very video. So first up is from Chris Huffmeyer. Hi Dolly, really enjoy watching the show each week. I'm just wondering what you think about the Onyx Hub with the Sprag clutch system. Have you any experience on them? And perhaps could you explain it a bit? Hi Chris, uh, thanks for writing in to us. Uh, always nice to have our viewers write in. So I've not actually ridden that hub itself. So I do know roughly what it's about on the inside. And there's a really cool little video on their website actually where you can see how the hub works on the inside. But just so you know, the Sprag system is actually quite common in the automotive industry. It's used in starter motors, in motorbikes, it's used in automatic cars. And it's also actually used in helicopter engines. And one of the reasons it's used in helicopter engines are if the engine fails, it allows the blade, the rotor blades that is, to continue rotating faster than the engine allows it to rotate. So basically the, the rotor blades can continue on auto rotation so that hopefully the helicopter can continue flying basically out the sky. Okay, so to, to describe how that actually works, think of it as it looks a little bit like a roller bearing, but on the inside there are the things called sprags. So you've got this outer surface, you've got an inner surface, and then you've got these things that are like wedges. And they're kind of like an asymmetric figure of eight that they allow their free will to pass one way. And when you rotate it backwards the other way, they wedge into place. They basically can't move and they lock it in, in place basically and enabling you to pedal or whatever it is, whether you're slipping in a clutch or enabling it to actually pass through. Now it's supposed to be a very, very reliable system and there are actually springs to help it grab into place, but because of the way it slips so easily on the way past when you're coasting, it disengages just as well. Now, I'd actually be really keen to try one myself to see how they work. Um, actually out on the trail, because it's supposed to have a near instant pickup. And I've also heard that a near instant pickup feels great, but also it can actually feel a little bit too much at times. You almost need to coast backwards slightly to get your pickup just right. But that's basically the system. So if you look on the screen right now, you can see the Sprag system. You can just see it pulling apart there and you can see those Sprags on the inside sort of disconnecting and connecting with the inner race there. Quite a simple system really and it works very well although it's quite expensive in the mountain bike world because it's actually a lot of small intricate parts whereas in the motoring industry they're a lot bigger a lot more industrial and therefore easier to manufacture in that size okay so next up is from d stin hi dolly i recently purchased a 2018 rockshox reba rl 140 mil new out of the box, I noticed the stanchion baseline actually starts from the 130 millimeter zero point of the sag meter and close to about 10% on the 140 millimeter. I measured the stanchion with the ruler. Surprise, surprise, it's 130 millimeters. Uh, would you have any idea why that is? I checked the fork is definitely labeled as 140, so I haven't got a 130 by mistake. Uh, any idea will help. Okay, so firstly, for other viewers that might be confused, um, quite often on RockShox forks, you'll have two sets of markings on it for setting the sag. So in this particular case, it's a 140 mil fork. So it's also got the settings for a 130 mil fork because you can buy the fork and you can alter the travel of it. So it's useful to have those markings on there. But as Dee says, his fork should have been 140 and it's showing sag as 130. So it suggests the front end of the bike is slightly lower. Now, this is a typical characteristic of slightly too much air in the negative air spring. And there's a couple of ways around this without really having to strip the fork. So the obvious one you want to do first is hyper extend that fork. That's basically literally holding the crown, holding the brace and pulling it apart. And you will hopefully hear the air transfer back through that port. So there's a transfer port on the inside that when you pressurize the fork to start with, some of that air from the positive chamber goes into the negative. So you're left with a fork that kind of balances itself. Um, and another way around that is to get a cable tie and delicately push this past the seal on the air leg. And if there is a little bit too much pressure in the negative chamber, you will release it that way. Um, if it's not, um, send us a little video clip of your exact problem because there's a few other little things it can be and I've got other ways to remedy that. All right, next up is from Chris Bell. Quick question, 2.6 inch tie on I-29 rim, yay or nay? Uh, I'd say yay, why not? So I-29, 29 mil rim, uh, yeah, that will accept a 2.6, no problems. I know Blake absolutely loves 2.6s now, and on his little 27 and a half inch wheels, that's pretty much all he rides. 
Um, I would give them a go, but I'm such a 29er fan. I ride 29s for most things, and Continental don't yet make their B plus range in 2.6, and I don't even know if they intend on making it. The 2.4 in the uh, 29 is pretty flipping massive, so I'm quite happy with those myself. But um, why would you not want extra grip, extra rolling power, because it's a slightly bigger wheel, uh, and it's got more support than the bigger plus size 2.8 and 3.0 tires, so I think it's a yes on all accounts. Go for it. Okay, next up from Jose Capablanca. Hi Doddy, I recently got my dad into mountain biking. Good job, never too late for that. Um, and he purchased a Trek Marlin 5. Nice bike too. Uh, he's been riding for about a month now and he's telling me his hands fall asleep whilst riding. Does that mean he's too far forward on the bike? If so, what can he do to fix that? Um, well, yeah, there could be a few things. It could be the cockpit's a bit long, so the distance between the saddle and the bars. The stem could be a bit long. Um, even his handlebar roll can affect the position of that because you think your hands naturally, they're not completely straight, they rest at a slight angle so if your bars are fairly straight on there you can use that sort of rake that they have on there to get a little bit more comfort. Of course the grips themselves, if they're too firm, they can lead, basically numbness tends to come from the outside of your hand which is the ulnar nerve and it travels all the way up the whole outside of your arm. So it's all connected with your spine and everything, so that's actually something that can lead to other issues. So you want to make sure you get it right, but generally it sounds like front end's too low or it's too long, because that's what would suggest you've got too much weight on there. So if you can get the front end up a little bit, um, something else to consider that can put too much weight on the front, even if your front end is the correct height, is simply saddle angle. If your saddle is dipped down at the front too much, it naturally forces more weight onto your hands. So try leveling it out if it's a little bit front heavy, and then um, and then you'll see from there. But it's a little case of trial and error to get it right, uh, but you'll definitely know fairly quickly because it will just dramatically change things. And I hope your dad gets it worked out, Jose. And one more thing for you, Jose, is I actually made a video on a bunch of bike setup issues and queries we have. You might want to check that out. So I go into a little bit more detail on that sort of stuff. So the link to that is in the description below this video and I think I might throw to it at the end as well. So be sure to tune into that and click through. All right, tubeless related from Quan Tian. Hi Doddy, I've got the idea to convert to tubeless recently but my friend advised me not to. Um, I have this idea in my mind that I can still use a tube but fill the tube with sealant and air, making it like tubeless but still using a tube. Is it possible? Um, firstly, I wonder why your friend is not trying to make you use tubeless. It makes no sense to me. I've been using tubeless since 2005, I think. Um, I'd never go back the other way. I think I'd rather grow gills and walk backwards into the sea. I just, I honestly don't understand why people would have extra rubber in their wheels that can give you punctures. Um, I see a tube as a way to fix a bad puncture to get off the trail. Um, but yes, if you didn't want to commit to tubeless or maybe you didn't want the mess of using tubeless, which is perfectly understandable um, in my honest opinion, because it is messy if you're the sort of rider that chops and changes tires a lot. Uh, and in fact, a lot of my friends have stuck to tubes for that basis alone. Um, so yeah, you could put tire sealant inside an inner tube. It's never gonna work quite as well as it would in an actual tire, but I have heard people have some quite good effects with that. But seriously, I would give I would give it a try. I don't see why you wouldn't try it. All right, next up from Shane Witter. Doddy, I've got a Santa Cruz Tallboy LTC. I love the bike, but I'm interested in slackening the head angle for more stability on downhill trails. The current head angle is 69 and a half degrees, and I know works components, um, in case other people don't know, there's various different angled headsets on the market. There are the classic angle sets by Cane Creek, which I think I showed people on a recent show where you have a cup that go into the frame and you have a gimbal that sits on the inside, if we can get this one out, and it, you can basically set it to the angle that you want in combination with a different cup, so that can offset. And then Works Components are a UK company that also do a fixed cup, but the fixed cup is available in like half, one, two, degrees etc. Um, so it's a really good way of changing the handling of your bike. Um, anyway, um, Works make one which will give me a two degrees so that reduces mine to 67 and a half. I'm also interested in upgrading my Fox 36 150mm to 160mm as well. Not sure how this will affect my overall bike um, or if it's worth considering. Don't know too much about a mod like this, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I would actually, actually encourage you to do it. I think it would make your bike handle really well. However, I might not go for the two degrees. So even though you'd love your bike and you know how it handles, an existing bike, when you change it, it does dramatically affect the way the bike handles. 
personally I'd probably opt for the one degree, especially if you're going for a 150 mil to 160 foot, because for every 10 mil you can you can change the head angle by about half a degree as well, so that needs to be factored in. And some bikes are designed to have head angles as slack as 63 or 64, but the whole bike is designed around that. When you suddenly turn your bike that's nearer 70 to you pull it back by two degrees, you're gonna really, really mess with that handling. So I would probably go less. And if you're unsure, perhaps look at the options of a convertible system like the Cane Creek. Um, I believe they're a bit more expensive than the Works ones, so um, I would take that into account as well. But if I was you, I'd go one degree, not two, because you're gonna get a little bit more back with the fork travel increase there too. And I think that would make your bike handle really well. Okay, so we have a question from the imaginatively named uh, UY72277. Uh, dude, call yourself a name. <laughs> Be easy to refer to you. Um, Hi Doddy, please do a segment on gearboxes. I'm really interested in this truly new tech. Uh, how much drag once bedded in, how's the engagement, how's the drivetrain weigh, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, actually I really, really want to do that exact video and I was chatting to the guys from Pinion at Eurobike about doing something like this. I have spent a bit of time on the roll-off hub before, which got 14 speed, and I think they do more than that now. And I've also spent a bit of time on pinion, both with the chain and also with the Gates belt drive system, but not enough and not back-to-back -back on normal bikes, because I've seen what, what they quote with their drag ratio on there, and I, I think there probably is a little bit more drag, but I'm sure that the benefits could outweigh that. So I think we will do that, and I'm sorry I can't give you more of a fixed answer now because I simply haven't spent enough time on that stuff. But I think when it comes to, around to winter, I think that's gonna be the best time for us to do that here at GMBN Tech, because in the winter, in the UK, obviously it's gonna be filthy muddy the whole time, and that's when some of the clear advantages of that system will become, well, basically we're gonna raise their head. So um, give us a couple of months on that one to sort of figure something out, but we're definitely gonna do it because I completely believe that we will all be going gearbox at some point. Okay, next one's from Limondo. Uh, hey Doddy, can you help me choose between either an expensive trail hardtail or a rather cheap full sus? Uh, and you've quoted 2000 euros. Uh, it'd be very cool if you featured this question. Okay, firstly, it's a good question. Secondly, 2000 euros isn't really that cheap. Like, you can get a flipping good bike for that. Um, but in answer to your question, I would go to hardtail because for a 2000 euro suspension bike to be good, they're gonna have to cut some corners somewhere. So if you're lucky enough, it's gonna have a good fork on it. And if that's the case, you've got a good frame, you've got a good fork, everything else can be easily upgraded. And even the shock could be, could be tweaked a bit. But with a hardtail, you're gonna get a much better fork in there, much better quality of components everywhere. It's gonna last you longer, and it's gonna be nicer to ride in that period. So based on that, I would go for the hardtail. Um, but I don't think either's bad, because you can still upgrade the full suspension bike. Just be cautious, um, if you went for the suspension bike choice, that you wanna make sure the shock is good enough that it can be upgraded, or at least tuned, and the same with the fork. Okay, and the last thing in this week's Ask GMB Tech is I want to know what videos do you want us to make in our maintenance section? So obviously we've covered a lot over on our sister channel on GMBN, but think of it that we're starting fresh here at GMBN Tech. So one of the things I really want to do is a basics series and really look at all the details, even stuff like replacing a chain. So let us know all of those sort of things that you want to know in the comments below and we'll start making those videos. Likewise, for slightly longer content, let us know the slightly more advanced things you might want to do yourselves at home and we'll look at making those as well. Any suggestions are welcome. They might give us more ideas, what we can turn into series or maybe even produce bigger videos elsewhere. Anything is welcome, get your ideas in. So there we go, there's another Ask GMBN Tech Weekly Q&A in the bag. Please make sure you get your suggestions into us and also any questions that you want us to answer. Fire them into that email address that was at the beginning of the show and of course in the comments underneath. So for two great videos, click down here for a brake setup hacks and click down here for a bike setup video. So basically that is everything that the little setups do on your bike, raising, lowering a saddle, angling it, rolling your bars forward, all that stuff, how it affects it and maybe gives you sore hands or not, right down there. Don't forget to click on that round globe to subscribe to GMBN Tech and make sure you tell everyone about us, share it on Facebook, share it around and of course if you like mountain bike tech, give us a thumbs up.